The history of seismic data onshore spans far more than 100 years. It's a story not just about the technology, but also about the people behind the technology. So while we could start many centuries earlier, we start this story a little more than 100 years ago during World War I. Thanks to the likes of Andrew McNaughton, William Sansom, Lawrence Bragg, Reginald Fessenden and Luda Mintrop, acoustics emerged as a method of remote sensing. Mintrop had developed a portable seismic detection system to locate Allied artillery for the German army, while Karcher did almost exactly the same thing for the Allies. The first reflection patent was filed in 1929 by Karcher, much later than his first successful experiment. At the same time in the early 50s, Conoco introduced Vibrosize. Conoco geophysicists Crawford, Doty and Lee received the SEG Medal Award, now known as the Reginald Fessenden Award, as original patent holders and developers of Vibrosize. So what happened in the 1960s? This was the dawn of the digital age. Up until then, all recording, regardless of how it was done, had been analog. The change to digital recording fundamentally changed what was possible. Channel counts went from two to around 24 in the 1950s to hundreds and then thousands and then tens of thousands. 3D acquisition became possible. The concept of 3D seismic acquisition has been around for a long time. The advert on the left is from 1947, but the first 3D onshore seismic acquisition was not conducted until 1972. It involved 500,000 traces. Acquisition took a month. Today, some seismic crews record an equivalent number of traces in less than 30 seconds. One of the most important technical developments that led to this digital revolution was the invention of the monolithic integrated circuit chip by Robert Noyce and Jack Kilby in 1959 while Jack was working at Texas Instruments. Noyce and Gordon Moore of Moore's Law subsequently founded Intel in 1968, but we should look at this corporate history as the technology is intertwined with geophysics. In 1925, Karcher formed a new company, Geophysical Research Corp, GRC, which is now part of Surcell. Seismic reflection was so much better than refraction, and in 1930, Geophysical Service Inc. was quietly established to make the method available as a service to the oil and gas industry. Later, in 1941, the company was purchased by McDermott, Green, Johnson and Peacock. Three of these men, along with Karcher, were destined to subsequently become SEG presidents. So we started with some of the greats of the last hundred years and looked at others along the way. But I wonder if any of these innovators could have predicted today's technology. I wonder if Karcher could have conceived of moving equipment by helicopter or of a single man deploying a hundred full recording systems with survey through GPS, detector and recording all in the palm of your hand. Would he have thought that exactly 50 years later and 50 years ago today, man would conduct the first active seismic experiment on the moon? And so, as man was planting geophones on the moon, IEGC was formed. And as we move forward, perhaps we will not even have a single man in the field. A hundred years ago, Karcher recorded a couple of traces. Tomorrow, we'll be recording a million for every shot we take. 